Atlantic's hammered brass bowl kit is both attractive and easy to install. The impressively sized bowls, 30 and 36 inches in diameter, are made of hammered brass with an acid wash patina, perfect for creating stylish and durable water features. The 30 inch bowl features a 4 inch spillway, while the 36 inch bowl overflows all around its rim and down the sides. A 16 inch tall hammered brass pedestal raises the smaller bowl above the larger to create the water feature. The kit containing everything you need for a complete installation, mounts on a strong, trouble-free EcoBlocks reservoir to create a beautiful fountain requiring little to no maintenance. A pump vault keeps the pump protected and easily accessible and provides a secure location for mounting an optional fill valve to keep the reservoir full automatically. Start by determining a location for the feature. It should be near enough to an existing GFI equipped electrical outlet for the pump cord to reach. The pump should never be used with an extension cord. Avoid locating the fountain in low areas that flood to avoid extra maintenance. A reservoir of 5 EcoBlocks small with one PV7500 pump vault, 48 inches wide by 55 inches long, is sufficient for single, tandem, and triple vase installations or bowl installations, and many stone and column installs. Lay out the 5 EcoBlocks and pump vault, two blocks long by three blocks wide. The vault is typically located in the corner closest to the electrical service. Use stones or stakes at the corners, then mark or paint the line at least 12 inches wider and longer than the blocks and vault, 60 inches wide by 67 inches long, to allow ample space for backfilling. Find the lowest spot along the perimeter and excavate to a depth of 15 inches to allow sufficient depth for gravel to cover the reservoir, eco-rises, pump vault, and plumbing. Distribute the soil evenly around the hole. Dig an additional depth of 7.5 inches where the pump vault will be placed. Setting the bottom of the vault low ensures the pump inside will always be submerged and creates a convenient sump if the reservoir ever requires cleaning. Firmly tamp the bottom of the excavation and check for level. The included 13 by 13 foot liner is large enough for the reservoir and a generous skirt on all four sides to capture splash. Carefully spread underlayment in the excavation to protect the liner, working it down into the corners, Then set the liner with the excess evenly distributed all around. It's a good idea to place an optional, but recommended, second layer of underlayment over the liner to fully protect it top and bottom. Install the pump vault in the corner first, with the pre-drilled hole on top facing in towards the reservoir. Then set the five eco blocks in place. Check for level. The tops of the blocks should be level and even with the shoulder of the pump vault. Pull up on the fabric and liner to eliminate any slack, taking care not to lift the vault or blocks, then fold them neatly over the top of the reservoir. Repeat for the liner and outside layer of underlayment. Backfill evenly all around the reservoir, six inches at a time, stepping the fill in firmly, taking care not to shift the eco blocks. Leave the fill at the level of the blocks, then grade the excess to create a shallow bowl that will return splash to the reservoir. The small berm will prevent runoff and debris from entering the reservoir. Tamp the area around the reservoir, then carefully unwrap the underlayment and liner. Begin filling the reservoir with water now. It may be easier to install the pump in the vault before setting the vault in the excavation, but for this installation, we set the pump vault in the excavation first. Place the EcoRise diverter in the hole pre-drilled in the pump vault.
Unscrew the top union of the check valve with the 2 inch bushing and glue onto the diverter, making sure the threaded ring is in place before gluing. Cut the check valve discharge pipe at perfect cut line B for the TT4000 and glue the inch and a half male threaded end into the bottom of the check valve. Screw the check valve to the discharge of the pump and place the assembly in the vault. Then screw the union back together, making sure the O-ring is in place. An optional fill valve is highly recommended to keep the basin constantly filled, so there's no chance of the pump running dry. Install an inch and a half male thread by slip elbow in the center inlet of the larger bowl. If you would like lights in the bowls, you should install them as you install the other fittings. You will need two ring lights and two cord seal fittings, a transformer, plus a splitter. Remove the one inch bushing in the center of the ring light. Flip the bowls over and install the light at the base of the standpipe in each bowl. Install the inch and a half male adapters that come with the cord seal fittings in the offset inlets of the bowls. You can install the inch and a half by one inch reducer in the spillway bowl at this time. Route the cables down from the inside out through the adapters. Install the cord seal fittings to seal around the light cords using the included instructions. You should test the lights at this stage by attaching the two cords to a splitter and the splitter to the transformer to verify the lights are working correctly. To provide the additional volume of water that the large circumference of the overflowing bowl requires, build a simple manifold with the included fittings to combine the flow from two of the three outlets on the Ecorize diverter. Glue an inch and a half T to a Street 90 elbow as shown. Glue inch and a half by one inch reducing bushings into the T and elbow as shown and set the completed assembly aside. Depending on your particular layout, you may choose to route the one inch tubing around the outside of the reservoir or go right on top as we did. For this installation, we cut three roughly equal three foot long pieces of one inch tubing, then glued one of the three foot pieces of one inch into the reducing bushing of the spillway bowl. Glue the other two pieces of one inch tubing into the Ecorize diverter on the pump vault to the outlets farthest from the bowls. Set the pedestal over the large Ecorise with the tubing slot in the Ecorise pointed generally towards the diverter on the pump vault. Then snake the 1 inch tubing and the light cord into the pedestal and set the spillway bowl on top. Be careful of possible sharp edges on the pedestal. Adjust the position of the bowl and pedestal, then cut the 1 inch pipe as required to glue it into the third outlet of the diverter. Glue the 21 inch piece of inch and a half PVC into the elbow of the overflowing bowl. Set the overflowing bowl in position on the smaller eco rise, aligning the tubing in the slot as shown. Adjust the overflowing bowl to line up with the spillway of the smaller bowl. Cut the inch and a half pipe and glue it into the T of the manifold made previously. Cut and install the two pieces of one inch pipe coming from the diverter, one at a time, making sure they will lay flat on the eco blocks to complete the plumbing.
With the bowls and optional lights installed and the EcoBlox reservoir filled, plug in the pump. Adjust the valves to deliver the desired flow over the bowls. You may use plastic shims if needed to level them. Remove the valve handle and cover the visible understructure with the gravel of your choice to complete the installation. And that's everything you ever wanted to know about installing the Atlantic Hammered Brass Bowl Kit. But we're afraid to ask. Check out our Getting to Know videos for more information on this and all our products. Don't forget to like, follow, and share us on social media. See you in the next video.